Hey guys! So this video is meant to get you started on the poem by W.H. Auden. So we know Auden from reading Musée des Beaux Arts, which I know I pronounced wrong, and I'm going to pronounce this one wrong as well. Um, he titles this one Pissage Moralisé. It's the best I can do right now. Um, and the important thing to note here is that this term actually means something. So an art historian, Erwin Panofsky, coined the phrase Pissage Moralisé to describe the kind of Renaissance painting in which aspects of landscape have moral significance. So this is key because we see in the Sistina, so this is a Sistina, the words that Auden has chosen to end the lines with and therefore show up again and again are aspects of landscape, valleys, mountains, water, islands, cities, part of a landscape. Um, sorrow is the one that is an abstract noun. So that's worth noting and we can look at that later. Um, but we saw already from Auden's former poem, Musée des Beaux Arts, um, he's obviously very inspired by art. So we can see that popping up again in this one. So I already mentioned that it is a Sistina and it's gonna follow a certain pattern. Um, we did have a presentation on this, so you'll remember it from that. But just to see, we've got this word valleys and then valleys is gonna show up again in each stanza at a very specific spot. And here it is again and again more valleys and then valleys down here so sistinas have a, a rigid structure that way in which you have to use the word that you've ended the first line with in a certain place and the next stanza and the next stanza um, there's the same amount of stanzas ending with these three at the end so very much a structured form poem the thing with sistinas though is because you're using the same word multiple times, you have to keep it fresh for every new stanza. So you'll see this first line says, hearing of harvests rotting in the valleys. So the next time he uses valleys, he probably doesn't want to talk about harvests again. Um, it says that brought them desperate to the brink of valleys. And then down here, where every day there was dancing in the valleys. So he's going to be using this aspect of landscape, valleys, for something slightly different every time. All right, so I drew out my interpretation of what I think is going on. And I'm saying what I think is going on because this poem is very symbolic. The valleys, mountains, water, islands, cities, they're all representing something. And it helps to see this poem in a larger canon of work by Auden, but we just have this one. so. Again, my interpretation. So it says, hearing of harvests rotting in the valleys. So these are my rotting harvests in the valleys. And then seeing at the end of street, the barren mountains round corners coming suddenly on water, knowing them shipwrecked who were launched for islands. We honor founders of these starving cities whose honor is the image of our sorrow. So the cities are already getting a bad rap. Um, the cities are starving, nothing's growing there. Um, the founders of the city, their image causes sorrow. <clears throat> Down in the second stanza, um, this, <clears throat> this line, dreaming of evening walks through learned cities, that was the goal of the founders, maybe. They were dreaming of an educated, intellectual city, like a hub of thought and philosophy and growth and progress. Um, these people reined their violent horses on the mountains, those fields like ships to castaways on islands, visions of green to them who craved water. So this was, this was the goal. And as time progresses, they built by rivers and at night, the water running past windows comforted their sorrow. Each in his little bed conceived of islands where every day was dancing in the valleys and all the green trees blossomed on the mountains where love was innocent, being far from cities. So as life goes on, like they're imagining this and the cities are not places of innocence and love. 
And as you continue on through the poem, try and think about what each of these words that Auden keeps repeating, valleys, mountains, water, islands, cities, and sorrow, how those all are related, and do they change throughout the course of the poem? So that's what I'm going to say to get you started. And just know that this is very abstract. And when you're looking at an Auden poem like this, again, it helps to notice when it was written, um, in what book it was published in before or after other books of poems. So don't be afraid to kind of as you're writing or analyzing, um, as you're annotating your packet, don't be afraid to interpret it in the way that you're seeing it. You can see my artistic creation. I'm sure Auden would be really unhappy with what I've created. All right. Thanks, guys.